after scoring that goal, I, I didn't play again for a few weeks. The next game I didn't play and the game after I didn't play. I'm interested to know what happened to your, um, obviously, you know, confident guy, but what happened to your self-belief after that moment? You just spoke about driving home and thinking like, this is, you know, this is special. This is a unique feeling. How did you, how did that change your game after that? Uh, so obviously it was the best thing ever. And obviously the, the night after it, I was with my family and it was just, I was actually with my family, with my friends. I went out with my friends. I just enjoyed what had happened and my friends enjoyed it and we were just celebrating and partying and just just enjoying that moment. But then obviously the next day when you wake up, you just want to do it again and you want to celebrate and spend time with friends and family because of stuff like this and it happening again. But after, after scoring that goal, I... I didn't play again for a few weeks. The next game I didn't play and the game after I didn't play and it was weeks went by before I stepped on the pitch again. And like, this is exactly what we spoke about. At times like that, you start to think like, why am I not playing? You start to ask yourself a million questions. And at the time I, I was, I was thinking, why am I not getting on? Why am I not playing? And starting to question myself, like, how come this is happening? I scored and now I'm not playing, but... When you're in the moment, it's easy to focus on the negatives. But I think when you come out of it and you look at the bigger picture, I think like we spoke about, just focus on what you can control. And that was in training every day, showing what I can do and, and waiting for the next opportunity. And I was only 19 at the time, so it probably would have been a bit much to be playing every single week and every single week. And I realised that and I, and, I, and I took a step away and, and looked at the bigger picture and thought, all right, when I get my next opportunity, I'll try and do something again. But like in the, in the moment, it's easy to start thinking and doubting yourself while you're not getting on the pitch and you start questioning, oh, maybe I didn't do as well as I thought. And, but when you look back at it, I think you was young. It probably weren't the right time to be playing every single week in such a physical league. So I think when you focus on what you can control in terms of training and and gym and fitness and time with family and just being happy, you just, and then it will come. And then obviously I started playing a couple more games after that and, and I was happy and I was enjoying it. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about a different aspect of, of your career now. Um, I used to share uh, a room on away trips with Neil Taylor quite a long time ago. Now I'm old. Um, but in 2015, he was named Asian footballer of the year. He has also spoke quite openly about his confusion as to why there isn't more British Asian footballers playing at a higher level. Um, you know, having a British Indian background yourself, um, and I've read articles you've been involved in where, you know, you share the difficult um, experiences you've had due to racism. Um, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, can you share a little bit with us those experiences that you've had and, and how you've managed to deal with them? Yeah, so... When I was young, I had a bit of racism and from, obviously I was a kid and it was all the kids saying, saying comments and sometimes parents saying comments, he, he won't, because like I said, I was always the, the best in my age group, if not one of them growing up. So other kids, obviously kids are just, are just kids and, and they don't like someone being better than them and, and would say stuff, but. When I was young, it, it never affected me. It was, I knew I was good and I would just try and prove them wrong or not make them or score a goal to just have the last laugh and it wouldn't, it would never affect me. And I think that's because I've had such a supportive family and they've always stuck by me that I didn't, even now to this day, I don't care what anyone thinks apart from my family. And if someone says I'm the worst player in the world, I don't care. But if my mum or dad say it, then it's, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt me, do you know? So from young and, Till now, I don't. I have never cared about what people think, and so when I was young, I, de I dealt with it well. It didn't phase me. I never went in went into it too much, and it didn't affect me. And I think that that's good because some people it can affect, and I think like it's okay to be affected because when you're super proud of where you're from, like I am, you can can be affected. But for some reason, when I was young, it just never affected me. People would say. 
there's no Asian players, what makes you think that you can do it? Or obviously racial terms just being thrown at you and stuff like that. So it was tough, but it weren't every single week I was playing, but every now and again you'd experience it because it, it weren't normal to see an Asian kid playing football, let alone being the, the best on the pitch. So people didn't like it and it never affected me. But obviously recently I had... <coughs> bit of racism on my social media and that affected me a lot more than when I was a kid and I think the the reason behind that is because I'd done so much for speaking about Asians in football and I think you can tell how proud I am of where I come from and who my family is and, and who I represent that that's why it affected me so much because in this day and age now it shouldn't be happening and people shouldn't be seen for where they're from or who they represent or their background and that's why it affected me so much because I'm one of very few Asian players I didn't really have anyone in the changing room to turn to I don't live with my family so I never had them to to go home and speak to or hug my mom or hug my dad and I think that's why it affected me so much when I was little I had my family with me I had I'd go home with my mom and dad and but here I had no one who was like me. I had no one to turn to. I had no family here. The only thing I could do was, was FaceTime my family and speak to them, which, which made me obviously feel better, but it's not the same as chilling with your mum or dad or brother or sister. So, yeah, it was difficult and it did affect me for a couple of days. But after that, like I said, uh, I couldn't control it. Uh, I couldn't control what people are saying to me. And ultimately, it was just using it as fuel to make myself better and, and prove these people wrong and make them even more jealous and maybe it's because I'm doing what I love and I'm, and I'm standing up for what's right and these people don't like it and the thing that affected me the most was how in 2021 it's still happening and everything that's gone on in terms of racism in football and, and taking the knee and people are still taking effort to to make someone feel bad about where they're from and who they represent so yeah it was difficult but i got through it i am um, not only do you speak incredibly well about it but I, you know i think what's as as well as that you're an incredible role model for for people who who maybe aren't on a platform to to talk about it um how did you manage to you know i think it's incredible that you're your way of dealing with it is to is that I want to prove people wrong, and you know I I am going to use that to to help me to become better. Um, do you have any advice for for people obviously maybe experiencing the same things? Uh, you know, we've spoke about that. There's a few young Indian, um, you know, British Indian footballers. Do you have any advice for for these young guys who want to replicate your path um, that might be finding that difficult? Yeah, I think. It's easier said than done, but obviously to have the self-belief and the confidence because at times people are not going to think you're good. People are not going to believe in you and people are going to think you're rubbish. But ultimately, I think it's just focusing on whose opinion matters. And for me, it's my family and, and that's it. And I don't care what anyone else thinks, like I've said. So I think young people growing up, you have to realise what's important and whose opinion is, is most important. And whose opinion you're going to let affect who you are. And I think if, if, if people are being racist of where you're from, and it's not just for young Asians in football, but anyone who's experiencing racism, I think that, firstly, I think it's okay to be upset and, and angry, because I was, I was upset and, and I was annoyed and I was hurt by it. And I think that's okay. But like I said, at some point after it, you have to realise that, being said people think like this it sadly it might not be the last time you experience it but just growing through it and and using it as as something that's going to make you better and for me it was proving them wrong but for other people it might be something com completely different but ultimately i think you have to try and turn the negative into a positive and and using it as fuel to make yourself a better person and, and growing from it and i think anyone Growing up, experiencing racism should never have to go through it, but the world we live in, you might do. And the most important thing is just 
not letting it affect you too much and and just making a decision of, of what you're going to do about it and how you're going to use it to make yourself better, really, because that's ultimately all you can you can gain from it. I mean, you know, I am sorry that that's something you have to deal with. Um, and I've known you've been out there, obviously, to India. I've watched the, you know, the videos that you've done of, of you sharing your experiences over there. How aware of you are you of, you know, the, you know, the role model that you are to, to these football fans over there? Um, and how does that make you feel? Uh, honestly, I, I went to India the first time two years ago and I knew growing up and before I went to India that there was a lot of Indian fans and people who followed me and, and, and I knew who I represented and, and what I was, who I was doing it for really making them proud. But I think going to India two years ago for the first time with, with my dad and, and my friends was honestly the best thing I've ever done. I, I didn't actually realise how big it was and how many people were supporting me and how many people even knew who I was. I went over there and there was millions of people who, who knew what I was and who were super proud of me. And like I said, that when the racism stuff did happen recently, I, I thought of who I represented and it was all those people. And that's something I used to to fuel me to make them even more proud to know that I've gone through this and I've come out of it stronger and, and better and like I said when I went there it's probably one of the best things I've ever done and ever experienced to go out there and spend time at schools and orphanages and like I said just putting a smile on people's faces was was making me happy and when I came back from that and pre-season started I was happy and and I knew that I was doing it for with so many people and so many people were proud of me and I had their backing and, and their support and honestly it meant so much to me and I, I was meant to go again every year since then but obviously because of what's happened it's been difficult but as soon as it's safe to do so I'll, I'll go out there every year I think and try and talk to, to young people and young kids and not just kids who want to be footballers but I went to a, to an orphanage orphanage that was just all girls and there was left on the floor outside the orphanage because the parents did, didn't want them because there was girls and I think that's one of the best days I've ever had even in terms of scoring on my debut and just seeing those kids and spent about three or four hours with them and it was like it was the happiest day of their life and that's one thing that, that I'm desperate to go and do again because making all them kids smile and making their a year really not just a day but it was it was honestly one of the best things i've ever done and knowing that i can go there and do that is is amazing <laughs>